Welcome to We Think, We Talk, sponsored by Select Care Pharmacy, a pharmacy that is non-retail but that services the smallest of group homes to the largest of skilled nursing facilities with prompt attention and care and world-class customer service. Welcome back to another episode of We Think, We Talk. I'm your host, Andy Garrison, sponsored by Select Care Pharmacy, as always. Uh, happy to have uh, a guest of the show that's a friend of the show, uh, Mr. Bill Vickery, uh, a.k.a. otherwise known as uh, Just Call Bill. Um, and that's how really everybody gets to know you, but um, Bill's been a friend of the show for a long time. I appreciate you coming today um, because Bill sends a message out that, that really I don't know that we could speak on enough. Uh, just because we were talking earlier on the phone this week, and but we talked multiple times about the same subject, um, you know, about technology, aging adults, and how does that impact everything. But um, kind of wanted to start because if, if you if you guys that are listening haven't signed up for Bill's newsletter, um, I really encourage you to do so because I find a lot of interesting information in that newsletter. Uh, and your your latest one, I think it was your latest one. Quick, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know it was your newsletter. Um, <laughs> But it really broke down about uh, the airline's cell phone and why there is a uh, airplane mode on your phone. Right. And I'll be honest with you. I, I understand, you know, that a lot of your clients and a lot of your people that take your classes and everything are aging adults. And I'm not young. But that's really the first time I've read a good understanding of what that's for. You know, other than I do it for convenience so people call and I don't have to, you know, know they're calling me. But um, technology, technology on the plane, and I think you speak of, you know, the 5G is the biggest concern that they had because of the altimeter. Isn't that what it was? Of the ba- a balancing mechanism on the plane? Yes, yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that hit me. I thought about it, and I said, wow. I said, a lot of the people, 23% in there, and I, I'm guesstimating in my head, you know, never turn off their phone. Just forget to or whatever. Sure. And we haven't had a notable big crash because directly related to the phone. But yet, it's still 5G is still interchangeable with that. Yeah, um, and it's it's interesting because, you know, when they first told you to turn off the phone and stuff, they were saying the FCC said it right. was communication interference with the pilot yes. in the operation of the plane. Right. But when I read that article... Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting, and in the five G is, uh, you know, it's interesting. We've seen commercials on TV for over a year oh, now, yeah. yes. uh, promoting five G phones, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because we don't even have a full five G network hmm. in the United States or the world. The five G is going to be a worldwide network. Got you. And it it will be very cool when it's done, but it's also very expensive. Oh, sure. And so, and a lot of people don't realize that your old 4G equipment will be obsolete when it goes 100% live. Not right away, but, you know, so if you're walking around probably with an iPhone 7 or 8, Mm -hmm. five years from now, it's not going to work. You know, I mean, not that it's outdated for one, but two, it just won't connect Right. into a 5G network. Right. So let me ask you this. This is pure curiosity. So uh, this the phone that I carry, all over the box, everything, you know, because, you know, you have classes where people literally bring their box. They'll unbox them in front of you. Right. So I'm a box reader anyway. I like to just sort of, because you can find interesting information on sure. the outside of the box that people usually just chunk. And I remember, I think this is the second phone that I that I purchased that had 5G. Have they used that as more of a marketing tool so far to say, hey, go ahead and get this? Because, you know, there's times it'll pull up and show you got 5G, full bars. But I'll be honest with you, from a 4G world to the 5G world, I hadn't saw the huge difference. And you're exactly right. I I think it's a marketing ploy right. just because, well, they're making all the new phones 5G, but there's not a 5G network yet. Right. Right. And most people don't even know, I mean, this could be a whole topic for another day, oh, but, yeah, the, yeah, but the yeah. short answer to that is, so 5G is going to be more GPS precise. Hmm. So with your phone, and what's going to happen is there are going to be more towers. Right. Because the signal has to travel a shorter distance mm-hmm. to be more precise. So the example I like to use is, so 
we see all these articles about autonomous vehicles and yes. trucks, you know, no drivers in the car. Exactly. Well, right now the average GPS locating system, not 5G, is about six meters, about the arm's length. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a driverless vehicle, now you have to think centimeters. Right. Or millimeters, even. Right, right, so, sure. because what happens is, what happens when you walk out in front of one of those cars, how does it know how to stop? Right, and it has to react. Exactly. So, now we're talking spaces that are this big mm -hmm. as opposed to this big. Mm -hmm. And so, that's just one of the advantages. The other is it's just going to be a stronger, robust, and faster network to begin with. And that's cool. I mean, and, and th it's always good for technology, but I always like to think back to when I see the technology that's coming into uh, the private sector, mm -hmm. you have to look at the military. And I do know that with, with some of the devices, the handheld devices that some of the, the guys in the military currently have and had for years, Sure. when they click their signal, whatever satellites and, and systems that they're using that we're now probably slowly starting to get privy or be allowed to use, it would take them down to half a centimeter. Right. You know, to, to fly in, extract them, that whole thing. So so the technology is new to us. Correct. But there's always some – it's been around a while and tested before. I mean, I don't think the U.S. government – and I know we're sort of going here, but, but we, you know, we have older adults now buying electric vehicles. So, I mean, I, I saw it yesterday. I mean, truthfully, I was at um, City Range, and – Right in front of City Range, they got a whole Tesla plug-in station now put up. Oh, really? I don't know if you've noticed That's that. new. Okay. Well, the per there was one car out there, and it was a, a older adult. I thought, hmm, interesting, because this person obviously has kept up with it. So uh, the, the point about this is uh, people need to be well-informed regardless, because all of this technology that has GPS systems, that have Bluetooth systems, anything that's transferring information really – there's no age gaps are starting to be broken now. When when people have the money, and they have the time to read and study, and they want it, they'll get it. Sure. Uh, the only part about it is how deep some of that technology you think you know, but honestly, there comes a point that you now you need to be taught, because if you don't know what the acronym for say this device is, and you even try to look it up, and it really gives you a thousand different options, you don't know how to use it. It's scary. And, and I find myself in that position all the time. I, mean, I have a radio that has all kind of, it, it'll, it says it do anything, but I don't know what those things are. Sure. Uh, and that's why Bill comes in mind. Well, that's the old saying I use a lot is you don't know what you don't know. Right. You know, right. so yeah, you could buy this really cool radio and maybe only listen to one channel on an FM dial where you could do, you know, a gazillion other things. You know, well, you know what drives me crazy? And this is just honest. And this is just, I guess, what I'll have to start dealing with now as I go on, few, you know, in my life every day. <laughs> uh, I don't know when the last time you went and bought a computer or something like that. Well, the generation now that's selling this stuff to us, they're smart. I, I just have, you know, 20-year-old person. And they're speaking to me about what it has. You know, they're trying to sell this to me. And I'm saying, and honestly, you know me, I'm shaking my head the whole time like <laughs> i know exactly and honestly it sounds like you're talking a foreign language sure it's just so and, and it makes me feel a little wild because not just 20 years ago i could have kept up with that conversation but now it's just so far out of the way but yet a 25 year old's listening going oh great that means i get to plug this into it and plug this and you're sitting there going how where did you how do you know that <laughs> i mean i've been around you my whole life every day sure where did where did we miss this but i guess technology is what you deal with every day and you learn with and and you gotta think kids when i say that people that have let's say they're in their 20s now their 12 years of basic school before college they faced uh, their day with the new technology every day right we were still using our old blackberries yeah i mean the kids now are they're growing up with it they've they've had some sort of device or computer you know Something. since Forever, you yeah. know. I say they were born with it, they, you know. But but for a very long time, yeah. and you and I are, and the people older than us are the generation that didn't have any of it. No, no, no. And I remember yeah. when my dad bought a VCR. I um, mean, it was expensive, but I just said, "Oh, we're like I forget the first movie we watched in it, but it was something stupid probably." But I remember thinking, "The world will never be the same." 
like on demand. I can watch what I want to. So I just worked with the lady this week. Her son called me and said, can you help set up my mother's components for her television? Components. Yeah. Actually, send me a text message. And I, that word components just kind of went, hmm. hmm. So I said, I have to call him because, you know, what the heck does that mean? So I call him and I said, so your mother's 91 and has components for her TV. What kind of components do you, does she need <laughs> right. to be connected? Right. Well, she has a VCR player, wow. a DVD player, okay. a CD player, and her stereo. Wow. And I said, does she use that? Well, no, it's not hooked up. And I said, well, yeah, I, I can do that. But I said, you know, does she have tapes? Oh, yeah, she's got tapes. And these tapes are older than me. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's, he said, basically, I, I need to get her off my back because I've been, she's been bugging me for months. <laughs> yeah. And so once we were, I was just about finished, and then she came back into her apartment. And well, sure. I said, okay, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use all this. I mm -hmm. said, so asked her first, do you know how to use all this? Sure. Oh, no. Mm. But it was her comfort zone to mm -hmm. know that she had all the stuff she had before, right? Um, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. when her husband was alive, five years ago, mm -hmm. and now she's on her own. Mm -hmm. And so I, I attempted to show her how to use things, and she just looked at me and says, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And her son was like, and he and I talked about this before, and I said, yeah. well, let's write some stuff down. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting when you said the, the VCR player mm -hmm. that... Um, but she had tapes from her 25th wedding anniversary, and, you know, I spoke to her, so why don't you just go and get those tapes converted to a DVR? Right. And at least they're going to keep longer, because right, right now they're going to rip Fade. and degradate. Yeah. So, anyway. Do you think a lot of that or any of that had something to do with it always had been set up when her husband was there, and maybe this was going to just give her that feeling Probably, of probably. You know, it's interesting you say that, because in a, in a couple of my classes— especially when I'm talking about that managing your digital and personal assets. Yes, that's where we're getting. In, in sure. one of the um, topics I talk about is division of household responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So usually when I have a room full of people, people have already gone through a major life change, mm -hmm. lost a spouse or a loved one. Mm -hmm. And typically in the household, your house and mine, she does this and he does that. Mm -hmm. And many times with the older generation, they don't know what the other person did sure. when they were alive. Right. Whether it's he pays the bills, he made sure the grass cut, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be traditional roles, but no. maybe he was the cook or, right. you know, she liked to drive on long trips. Well, when that person's not there, how do they adapt? Right. And eventually they do, but some people struggle mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. and it takes not... A year could no, be decades. It's a long time. And, and so part of that is that life-changing moment, mm -hmm. um, not just that you're, you miss them and you're grieving them, right. but all of a sudden, what was this password to the bank account? Yes. What was the, um, how do I turn off his Facebook account? Right. You know, how do I access the retirement fund? I mean, yeah. I could sit here and tell you well, all sorts of crazy stories. Well, here's a crazy fact for you. And, uh, and one of my boys shared this with me. There are more deceased users on Facebook with active accounts than live users. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I would believe that. And that's because of just what you said. Someone did not either have the codes or the know-how to go in and shut down the account, the profile. Right. Yeah, now with Facebook, Google, YouTube... Uh, Apple, there are ways you can actually put a legacy contact in right. your settings. Right. And uh, so then when that person does, like when my sister passed, mm -hmm. her first year of her anniversary of her birthday, she mm -hmm. popped up and wished Rosemary a happy birthday right. today. Right. And it was kind of cool to see her picture. And then I'm like, it's kind of creepy too. Yeah, right. Um, so I called her, her husband and said, hey, Michael, do you 
have Rosie's passwords for Facebook. And she was very meticulous and had that, mm -hmm. but most people don't. Right. Or they wouldn't know where to find it, so on and so forth. Well, now you can literally go in there and designate someone in the settings. And obviously, you'd have to prove that the person is deceased. Sure. But, but it uh, makes it a little easier to not have... You know, acts well. Well, it makes it having that pop up as if they were still alive. Correct. Uh, but another thing that it could be dangerous, and this is really where I wanted to go with this too, because this is what I'm seeing a lot of. A lot of people don't realize that many people have many bank accounts or pay uh, abilities set up through their their social media accounts. Uh, you have a Facebook Pay. Uh, it's a Messenger Pay. Uh, it's connected right to a credit card of your choice. This could be a credit card that nobody knows about. Sure. Um, and in many other social media platforms, this is before we even talk about trying to get into your actual bank account through your computer. It's just all this you had set up without realizing how much you put out there through the years of where the wrong hands um, can deplete and, and take away money. And what I, what I have noticed a lot when I see um, – you know, say happy birthday, and it's someone that I had known, and, and, and I've known that, that they passed years ago. Sure. We have scammers now, and scammers are getting really good. Like, I don't, you can, I say this in a very, I guess, true way. I don't know another way. A scammer looks like you and me to mm -hmm. the world, and that's the scary part about it because it, it because trust issues. And so I tell, I tell people, never believe or, or anything that you see on social media. Don't believe it. Oh, you mean everything uh, you read on the internet's not true? Right. <laughs> it, uh, you know, but for me convincing some people, and I, I'll use my wife as the example, she is a smart person, um, professionally and just smart. But she'll see something on Facebook, like somebody having a great time with their family on a vacation. Oh, why can't we be there? This is the perfect family. And in my brain, I guess not that I'm a skeptic, but I'm curious. Sure. That's why I've always done the show. I'm just curious. But something inside me, I know better. I know, you know what? They're smiling for the picture. That family probably hates each other. They're probably four seconds away from a divorce. But the picture doesn't reflect that because they have just now showed the whole world that everything is good. But even more scary than that is when a profile pops of someone that's deceased and you get a scammer that is really good. They know that there's a good possibility that Facebook pay and messenger pay and all those things that there could be active cards, active car credit cards, bank cards, diners club, whatever, linked in on that, and they'll break in and then they'll take them down to nothing, and you're responsible. Yeah, it. I always ask seniors, um, are they on social media? Mm -hmm. Typically. If they are, they are on Facebook. It's about 30, 35% of people over 60. That's their platform of mm -hmm. choice is Facebook. And I'll ask them, why are you on Facebook? Mm -hmm. And the majority, of, well, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. So one lady, when I asked her that, she looked at me and she said, well, I'm a voyeur. And I thought, oh, man, I shouldn't ask this question. But, you know, this is going to get but, good. But, but, but I, I said, all right, like, what do you mean? Because I'm thinking, all right, this thing could go. Because I know the definition of voyeur. <laughs> yeah. This thing could go south in a hurry. She says, well, I like to watch and see what my kids and my grandkids are doing. <sighs> yes. Okay. And she was probably in her 80s. Yeah. And I, but, and, and, which was kind <laughs> of interesting, awesome. but then kind of sad. And I said, well, don't you talk or see your family? No, not really. We mm. don't have a very good relationship. Mm. So this was a way for her, and I'm sure many others, uh, to yeah. kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And but I always caution people when you're, you know, anybody, you're a target for a scam on social media. You are, and especially as an older person, you're putting your picture out there. You have a profile, and we don't look like we did in high school. No, and. Speak you're, for yourself. You're going to be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't have this much gray hair then. I but, had uh, hair, <laughs> actually. Yeah, and I, my beard actually was one color oh. instead of like this gray thing going. Oh, so, there you yeah. go. Um, but so I always caution them. I mm -hmm. said, you know, again, you're you're a target. Mm -hmm. you're, you're out there putting yourself out there, and mm -hmm. many scams occur just through Facebook alone. They do. They do. Well, and, you know, an, this is annoying to me, but I see how 
just in three years, I'd say, has really become target rich. Um, a lot of us in the professional community, we use uh, LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's an incredible tool. Uh, LinkedIn is really good. Um, advice that I have given to people that I know that aren't verified, that get yourself verified. Uh, I really think it helps. Well, for, I know if I look at an account and see that it's verified, I feel better interacting with that account than not a verified account because this is like somebody took extra time to license and prove who they are. Sure. But, and I don't, and you probably have noticed the same things. I know you do a lot through LinkedIn as well. Um, but I get so many now friend requests from, I just want to be your friend. And they look like supermodels and they're showing a little more than they should. And yeah. I know what it's actually the event is trying to, to get me to be their friend for, but, that is like becoming rampant, and you can't I, I really have noticed fil- a lot of that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And I haven't. There's no way for me to really figure out how to filter that. And luckily, my brain right away just goes delete, 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 delete because I don't even you know want to click on and have have a virus run through something. Sure. More or less, try to you know explain. I would just like to talk to you to make my English better. That was one common phrase that is used oh, often. Wow. Um, but I can also see how. Somebody could be sitting there, uh, an older adult, and using this as a networking way to, you know, just make friends and and share business interests of the past and think that everybody there is friendly. Sure. Because it was a platform built for everybody to be friendly, really. Mm -hmm. And one click can destroy many things. Um, So you almost have to teach that all the time. It's a repetitive thing. Yeah, I, I remind the seniors that, I, you know, the, the Facebook term for friends is they're not your friends. Yeah. You know, th- yeah, do you, no. I said, is everybody that you're connected to on Facebook your friend? Oh, well, no. And I said, so they're not your friends. No. So just be careful, be cautious, um, especially if you've put yourself out there in a picture that there could be, you know, I had one lady, her friend called me and said, can you help my friend? I think she's being scammed. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, will she listen? She says, well, she won't listen to me, but maybe she'll listen to you. Oh, right. And she told me the whole scam mm-hmm. set up. So when I talked to her, she was willing to talk to me. I won't go through it. It's a long, long story. But sure. it was someone posing to, as a veteran mm-hmm. that was coming back from a, a, a tour in Iraq or mm-hmm. Afghanistan and wanted to send her boxes of valuables, money and cash and jewelry that supposedly that he had gotten when he made these raids and whatever. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, it was a pretty elaborate story, but it right. was the same story her friend told me. Right. And so I thought, well, I just can't like jump on her to say, duh, mm-hmm. you know. And I said, so let's just say this is real. Why would a complete stranger send you boxes of money and jewelry and mm-hmm. And I said, have you ever met this person? No. Do you know him? No. Well, he's a Marine, and he's from you know, my hometown, and you know, so on and so forth. And so I kept asking her questions and questions. I said, so let's just say they, he sends these boxes. He wanted to send them to her house hmm. to, to take care of them till he got home. Mm-hmm. I said, so what's to say if there's that many good things in those boxes that someone's not watching that delivery and we'll come and hurt you and maybe kill you. Mm-hmm. Well, then I got her attention. Yeah. But it was one of those I had to really kind of walk her through and have her think differently. Right. But she was thinking she was doing something good and helping somebody. Well, and, you know, but, but, I'll, but see, she was trying to be kind. Sure. She saw the Marine. That's patriotic. All these things right. They're playing on your emotions. And, and, and it was also, it sounded like a brilliantly written scam because it's real hard to, to see the word Marine and deceit in the same sentence because right. most Americans don't even put those in the same sure. box together. The one that still I like, that's my favorite. I still get these occasionally, but now they're just so funny. I have to read them. But, you know, I'm king at a bar. Oh. Uh, and I haven't and, seen that one in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I live over here, but but I need to transfer. Uh, if you send me 700 it'll release my $7 million to be sent to you, and I'll split that with you. I'm like, you know, okay. You know, but that has fought. You, you got to think that they fish. Sure. They send it out to so many people that if two people bite a day, which you know more than that bite. 
Yeah, that's it's a numbers game. That's 1400 bucks sure. a day. And if you asked any of our friends that we actually know that are, are, are our friends, we see them. And how many people wouldn't take an extra fourteen hundred bucks a day just to put in your pocket cash? Well, many would. Sure. Well, I know people that if I offered, say, "Hey, I'll give you three million, they'd stop and think about it. Not even consequences, you know. So that one sort of faded away, but it's still apparently good enough to hook some people. But the problem that I'm scared of, and we'll get into, because you and I were talking about this about my mom, is. They're so elaborate, and now you got the CGI, you got uh, AI that I've been learning about. You got that can rock. I mean, you can put in the subject and kind of what you want it, and it will pr- create the best script you've ever seen. That's so believable. I mean, I had a lady yesterday I was talking with. She said she wrote her website content, her social media, and something else all through AI. You know, I'm working on something right now through AI, and I mean, hopefully I'll have it done before this post and she sees it, but there's this little story that my wife and I have always, ever since we started dating like at 15, uh, like an imaginary little story and that we've had, and I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> but but everybody's done this. Sure. If you're married, you understand. <laughs> and so I thought, wouldn't it be cool, because Nate, my youngest, you know, had, had told me about, you know, kind of what AI explained it. And then my other son explained that there's different things he uses and attaches to his to help with uh, tasks that he has. So I'm like, okay, I need help with all that. So I found this free thing and I put in subject and kind of a brief description of what the storyline is and hit go. And it it creates the pictures and the whole book. So I'm doing that, and, it, and literally, I think the only thing that's going to cost me is like three ninety nine for the printing of to actually have it printed. If you know her, not just looking at it online is good enough because then it's completely free. But it's like a better than. I mean, it's the exact story that we told, but it's even better because it was done correctly. And yeah, and the cool thing is you can go in and edit those, yeah. you know, to more personalize it, right. Um, but yeah, it, it's I mean, pretty it's, amazing and scary almost of what well, it can do. You can come up with a script and, and, and I certainly don't mean this by, by any stretch of the imagination to offend anyone, but a lot of the, the scam artists that we have to face, uh, aren't from the United States. So a lot of that's, uh, uh, English is not their first language. So in the past years, you could sometimes catch in some of the, the story or the text something that just kind of stood out from you to let you know that English wasn't the first language and that you might want to just dig into it a little deeper. Sure. Um, but with this technology, it's going to come out perfect, probably with better linguistics than we have. So it's going to get harder not to believe. And then with all the other pictures behind it, the storybook – can make this thing very, very real to somebody gullible because uh, I think I said this to you on the phone day before yesterday, whenever we were talking. Here's the concern. Probably 99% of people that are that have a diagnosis of dementia that are in long-term care facilities, which you and I see every day, have not been deemed incompetent. Right. That's a scary thought if people actually hear what I'm saying there. The communities are doing a good job protecting them from what we call the real world, the bad real world. The families have done such a great job. But in the legal scope of things, of contracts, of uh, obtaining credit, credit cards, uh, moving money, technically if you're not deemed incompetent, don't you still have the legal right to your stuff? Absolutely. Because... You know, who you're free. You're a free person in this country. And it takes a lot of work to have somebody, you know, and, and these, a lot of these patients should be for their own protection, you know, at least financial protection. But the families, I don't know that they've been educated on it very much. They have been educated by this point because, you know, long-term care is only a 20-year thing now. We had skilled nursing before that. Hmm. So, so 20 years is really not a long time. Sure. But... But the average family has not had you or I come sit down at their table and explain to them, okay, you've got a diagnosis, or your mother, father, loved one, whoever now has this diagnosis, well, what do we do now? Well, the normal next steps that they hear are, I'm going to take care of them as long as I can, and then we'll find placement in a memory care. 
good plan, but they're not thinking anything about financial and assets and things like that or passwords. We're getting sure. ready to go into that. Or mental health. I, I spoke about that to you on right, the phone. Right. What happens when that comes into play, but yet at the same time, you don't follow through with the two doctors, the emergency hearing, you know, it was essentially a small probate court, which is, you know, and all that's time and money, but you can lose so much more. So it seems that that needs to be a focus too now on ST because that's part of technology because it's so easy for someone that, I guess this is the nurse side of me, that people automatically assume that someone that has a diagnosis of dementia, they're not as smart as they were. It's a lie. Right. Uh, they do have memory issues, forget things, but if they were great on a computer, doesn't mean that all of a sudden now they're not going to be great on a computer. And if you give them their same computer that they've had for the last five years, I bet you they're going to be able to go into all their accounts and everything else that they used to manage. Sure. And you're sitting at home thinking they're safe or you're safe and they're living in a community, you know, being treated well, safe, but they have that computer. And next thing you know, husband or wife goes to check the bank account and it's zero. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that. I have a a neighbor down the street that every now and then he'll just call me. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on speed dial three. (laughs) Yeah. and You're on his board of directors. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And he's early stage Mm -hmm. dementia and uh, got some other health issues, but he'll call me and, well, the screen's out of whack or this, Mm -hmm. whatever, and... And I could tell his wife was really kind of, she says, I don't even know that he calls you. Right. And I said, well, that's fine. You know, I'm three doors down and mm-hmm. I can walk up the street or stop on my way home one day. But um, I finally had a discussion. I said, first of all, are you, are you getting a break? Are you getting, because she's 24-7 care. Oh, wow. That's tough. Um, the good thing is he's not driving. But I also, I said, so is, he's not, what is he doing on the computer? Right. You know, I was worried about scamming and is oh, sure. he paying any bills? Oh, no, no, no. I don't do, he's not, he's basically reading and checking sports. And mm-hmm. and I said, well, just keep an eye on him. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's his form of entertainment. Sure. His form of keeping, knowing what's going on in the world. All right. And, but again, it's that you don't know what you don't know. No. Um, that. I said, just be careful. Don't be clicking on stuff. Don't be, you know, well, talking to strangers. You're 84 years old. Still don't talk to strangers, you know? Well, <laughs> well, here, well here's, a, here's a general question, and this answers his thing. Um, you're married. Mm-hmm. Do you tell your wife everything? No. No, I don't either. I've been married right at 30 years. Yeah. Not on purpose. Uh, not, a, not to be deceitful. Yeah, it's not a secret. It's just, Right, you but know. it's just something that I promise you she would find boring. Right. Like, <laughs> absolutely, like... Not, not to say anything, but I'm proud of the shows that, that we do. Uh, you've listened to a lot of them. You've seen a lot of them. You've heard a lot. We try to put good content information. Sure. I'll come home. Uh, Chris will send over, hey, got it done. Take a look at it, right? And I'm, like, excited to watch the show because I always learn something from a show after the fact. Mm-hmm. Because talking back and forth, I'm hearing it, but but you get a different perception of it if you listen to it back. Sure. And and I'll have my earbuds, not not to disturb her because she, she's watching a murder mystery, <laughs> which you know that's another conversation you and I. But I'm so excited about or something. I'm like, hey, take this earbud, put it in your ear, watch this with me. I don't want to. I hear you talk every day. <laughs> that sounds like, like my wife. <laughs> wow, you know, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. But yet, you you're just like you just do what you do. Sure, you know whatever. But that also led me to believe, because when you said something yesterday about, so it's not that I didn't try, but now it goes to, let's say, our banking, things like that. Because, I mean, I intend to be here another 50 years, but God very well may have different plans. Sure. Because that's the one thing that you said, and you always have said this, that's the only thing we can't calculate that we don't know. So taking that in consideration, and, and I understand what she's doing. She's like, don't interrupt me. I'm watching this. You know, I'll watch it later. No, she won't. And, and, and that's fine. But also, too, I realized that she would also do the same thing if I said, because I've tried it. I did try this. I had her bank statement pulled up. And I'm like, hey, let me show you how to get into this one because it, it has, I have it under a widget now, who Nate taught me what a widget was. So, but it's easy to get to. 
and here's what the password is. And she responded the same way. Uh, show me later. But I thought, okay, so not to quote Garth Brooks, but so let's say tomorrow didn't come. That access to that money would be important because now you got things to take care of. Sure. A lifetime of your life to take care of. You can't get into it. So unless you got a card that you can go to an ATM, which lim- only limits you very, you know, ATMs are set like four hundred dollars, three yeah. up to seven hundred, I believe, thousand maybe. I don't know what they do now. Um, but quickly she would run out of options of cash because it takes a lot of work, and in some cases a death certificate to be able to get into that account. Yep. Um, death certificates don't come the next day. No. So that conversation, even though for some reason I felt that it was important, she didn't want to hear it. So it takes me to what you developed, your idea. And actually, I've been using this for a very long time, ever since you and I. Uh, I think I got to see the first model of this. Of, uh, we were at a restaurant somewhere, and you said, let, mm-hmm. me, let me show you something. But it, but it hit me in a way. So I actually created, A, what you had gave me. I, you, that's full. And then I've made addendums. Sure. Because things change. Passwords change. But I, I wrote them down. I wrote everything down. So, And I said, instead, instead of listening to me, let me show you where it's at. And it's where everything else she knows I have. I have one drawer in the house. The rest is for her. <laughs> but that was my way of going, okay, I want to be able to take care of you. Even when I'm not here to take care of you, you're going to need this information. Yeah, it's not if, it's when. Oh, it's a you know that's a bet that I'll take because it's a hundred percent guaranteed. Sure. Yeah, I, I always I always say so when a life incident happens, yes, sickness, illness, yeah. or death, yes, accident, who will come help you when you can't help yourself? Mm-hmm. And people kind of pause for a little bit and they'll say, well, what do you mean? Mm. Um, well, I have a will. Or, but, you know, so interesting stat, 65% of people over 60 don't have a will, trust, or an estate plan. Right. This information is never in a will. No, never. Um, because There's sometimes, not even a place for it in the will. Exactly. And sometimes wills become public information after they do. you die. They do. So that's why would, I always go with a trust. Right. But And so that's a, you know, a whole other topic whole other for topic, another day. But, but, yeah. but, but if you don't have a will, trust, or an estate plan... Go get a lawyer. Go do this right. Um, I always, when I teach this in my class, I say, if you told your son he gets the car when you die and you don't have a will, he most likely will never get your car. Right. Well, and another scary thing for me is, you know, I realized on how hard that I've worked through my life to put this away or this away or what or an asset or something, right? And why do I want to leave a judge that I don't know, I've never met, I'm sure they have the best interest, but not follow exactly what I want because they feel that it could be done a little differently or should be done a little differently. When I written the will for a specific reason I wanted, Right. that's why I chose the trust. But, but it's, even the trust doesn't have passwords. Sure. Um, you could it, probably amend it, but... But yeah, but, but, exactly. But at the end of the day, they just, the judge can't make their own decision. They just have to follow. Those are the differences sure. in a in an elementary way. Right. But you you had basically created a binder for people, mm. and it asked the questions that unfortunately are scary, and there's never a right time to ask them. Um, which uh, I find I find amazing, but also I find true. Yeah, you got you you got that photo with you. Yeah. So it's 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 not a it's not a crazy book. No, uh, I mean it's it's not difficult. But you know the most challenging part about this thing is sitting down asking those questions. Sure, because you know I know we, we don't want to ask our husbands, wives, especially our mothers, fathers. You know because like my dad, don't pry. You know you'll figure it out when I'm dead. Well, it got complicated because I can think back when he passed away 17 years ago. And I still got it in a box somewhere. I went through four or five legal paths to close his estate. Wow. If I'd have had that, it would have been one little book. Um, yeah, I, I created this for two reasons. And on the inside cover, I write a couple paragraphs of the, imp, the inspiration and, uh, mm-hmm. of why I did it. And so one was uh, working with my clients. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the first trigger point for this was I received a phone call one day from a lady. She was very upset on the phone, and she said, I was told you might be able to help me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what's going on? She said, well, my husband recently passed away. He was the technology guy in our house, and he had all the usernames and passwords right here. Mm -hmm. I can't get in his phone. I can't get in the bank account. Mm -hmm. I can't get in the retirement savings fund. Mm -hmm. I can't plan his funeral because I didn't have access to cash. That's, yeah. And, oh, by the way, I haven't slept in two weeks. Oh, wow. And one of the first times in my life I didn't have a whole lot to say. Yeah. I, I was speechless. Mm -hmm. And she said, can you help me? And I said, I don't know. Let me... Let, I'm sure we can, but let me figure this out. So I called it the next day. We went over. I took a, a really good computer technician that I know, mm -hmm. and with her permission, he hacked her husband's laptop, mm -hmm. and we found everything. Good. Took a couple hours. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to do that, but people way smarter than me yeah, are not with me. But she goes, I don't know what else I would have done. This, this is, like, incredible. So on my way home, I'm thinking – why did that happen? This should mm -hmm. never happen to anybody. This poor lady was going to hell and back because oh, of just the, you know, the sure desperation in the spot she was in. Right. Well, then I fast forward about five years ago. Um, I was the power of attorney for my dad, both uh, healthcare and mm -hmm. durable. Uh, durable is the financial side, mm -hmm. as you well know, and was helping him through things and after he was in and out of the hospital a lot, I went to him one day. I said, Dad, when's the last time you paid your bills? It's none of your business. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad, um, you've been in and out of the hospital for about six, eight weeks. Have you made the house payment? What about the cable bill, the, you know, the utilities? And he went, oh. I said, I need to know the name of the bank and where is it. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you how much money I have. <laughs> so it's that generation, it probably is. like your dad Absolutely, and my dad, 100%. Uh, very proud, very independent. Mm -hmm. But it was like, why are you asking me this information? I mm -hmm. said, Dad, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. It took a while oh, for him yeah. to let me help him. Yes. Um, but once I did, it really showed me the gap right. of he knew where all of his stuff was, mm -hmm. but as his cognitive decline increased, mm -hmm. I was almost helpless till I could literally, you know, yeah. sit with them like by ourselves one right. day and just having a father-son chat to mm -hmm. say, um, here, here's where I call it your personal assets. Where's your stuff? Stuff. You know, yeah. so it could be a safety deposit box mm -hmm. and where's the key? Mm -hmm. And um, for instance, one day I got a call from his caregiver. My, my dad lived in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I live in South Carolina. Right. I remember you telling me that. And yeah. I said, Doreen, that's his caregiver. I said, that's not a good question to ask me where your dad is. I'm, <laughs> I'm 725 miles away. Right. She goes, well, he's not here, neither is the car. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. Well, he's not answering his cell phone. So now everybody involved Panics, is yeah. worried, thinking the worst. Sure. And so eventually he shows up four and a half hours later calls me and says, why were you, why is everybody bugging me? What's going on? But I couldn't call the police right? because I didn't know the make, model, and license plate number of the car. Mm. I couldn't just call the Michigan Highway Patrol and go, hey, there's this old guy driving a black Ford SUV. Yeah. They had a laugh at me. Yeah. They were like, uh, which of the six million would uh, you exactly. like to pull over? And, right. and where do you think he might be in, you know, the metro right. Detroit area? And with four and a half hours away, you'd have been wrong. Uh, exactly. Absolutely. And so it really made me think about, and that's where I, I created this document called Life Stats. Yes. And that's really what I call is how to manage your digital usernames and passwords mm -hmm. and your personal assets, mm -hmm. a way to have a plan, a proactive mm -hmm. plan. Um, that could augment if you do have a will and trust, and if you don't, even better. Um, but it's, it goes in that advanced directive category. Right. Um, so it, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, when I introduce it to people, they go, wow, I never thought of that. And whether right. it's somebody that's 40 right. or somebody that's 80, right. you need this. Right. I was, I was sharing uh, this uh, idea of you to a really good friend of mine that's a mortician. And uh, the business side, he gets 
someone passes away. Of course, it's a it's been in this town for probably a hundred years now through family. Sure, and it's the go to and great bunch of people. But my friend that is the mortician and then bomber and all there. Um, we were just having a lighthearted conversation one day and. And we're talking about his job and our differences between our job. And uh, he said, I feel like I'm a researcher most of the time. I said, really? And I never thought this about him because I always just thought his job involved I'm embalming somebody, showing their op- people options, and then we coming together with how much you want to spend. Mm-hmm. You know. But what people do is they don't have a clue about the, the policy, life insurance policies. They just maybe have them but really don't even know how to, to engage them or activate them. And so they have a courtesy at most funeral homes. You can bring that in, and they'll start sending the letters oh, okay. to the to Fidelity or, or whoever uh, it is. And that takes so much more time sure. than the actual funeral and bombing and everything combined. And he said, to be honest with you, that's why the rate and markup of funeral services is so very expensive because the hours of us going through to help get payment, people never see. But usually you have three or four office staff members that do nothing with the process of the body or even showing the body. They're always in that back office going through these constantly, on the phone with insurance companies constantly. And then finding bank accounts, like there's computer systems and all, but then death certificates have to come, in which they come to the funeral home. Right. So it's this whole inner working of a world that I didn't realize, but I was telling him about this, and he was like, wouldn't it be so nice, and he said this, that if a family member just handed me this and said, look, I'm too distraught, but I need your help, but here's most everything that you're going to need. Well, and he's exactly right. So you think about it, especially when somebody passes, you're grieving, you're, your mind's going a thousand different directions, right. and you don't want to have to worry about this. I call it going on the Easter egg hunt. Right. So where is that life insurance policy? Right. Is there one? Right. You know, how about the money to pay for the funeral? Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Like with my dad, I didn't really have this filled out, but I got to spend enough time with him personally mm-hmm. that I knew everything, but like one of them is, what church did he go to? Mm -hmm. Well, I knew he went to church, but I didn't know which one. Which one, right. And I sure as heck didn't know the name of the priest. Right. And one day I needed that to plan his funeral. That's right. So, but it's little things like that, that um, kind of the rocks in the stream that Mm -hmm. helps you navigate that uh, when you need to. Well, I'm thinking... In, in my head, what would be important, in this, and, and especially the industry that I, I, I work within every day, our long-term health care. And you know all of our good friends in this industry. I really i am surprised. I know you're working with some, but I, I think this is a part of, because here's a part when we sit down with a client and their family. And we asked some, I would say, a few of the questions that you go into very good detail but just few of the questions so we can have some of those answers, but there's nothing about financial, nothing specific in regards to church, house, car, make. It's just, you know, what religion are you? You know, what's this? What's this? So try to get a basic yeah, idea. Yeah, they may ask power of attorney. Right. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. But it's it's very high level. Yeah. And and what I would, you know, I, I think I know where you're going. So yeah. it's really interesting because... What a differentiator something like this could be game changer for any person in business and not just the senior industry. No. Think about no. like, and you probably know the stats better than I do, but major employers, how much time families take off work to take care of their elderly family. Right. And many the times FMLA numbers right now are insane. And and so if they had something like this mm-hmm. that, you know, geez, I, I don't know where you know, dad's POA is or his DD-214 or whatever it is um, that is an employer, maybe through the employee services, you know, uh, assistance program or, but even more so the communities, geez, this could be part of the welcome package. This could be, that's exactly, you know, to say, okay, on the intake of this. Now, what I tell people, I said, this is only as good as the information that's put into it. Right. You know, this is literally filling yeah, the Yeah, if you lie that you're a billionaire in there, it's not going to actually make it happen. Right. Or if you just handed it and say, here, Andy, here it is, and right. you never filled it out, then it's worthless. Right. 
It's so, a tool. So there's all use sorts, it as a tool. exactly. So there's all sorts of creative touch points that businesses can use mm-hmm. for their residents and their families to provide more value. Well, you mentioned something too, and I want to highlight this because I think it's very important because you do get this information in, in your book, but you don't know how many times, we're talking about hundreds of times over the years, um, that I have a client that will have passed. And by this point, I'm, you know, fairly really good friends with the family, know them well, and my, and my heart is broken just as theirs, you know? Sure. And this client that has passed away for years, I've heard wonderful stories about the military service and how proud they very uh, are, are and, and have been and things they've done and all this stuff. So they're kind of just secretly telling you that they want the military rights funeral. But without a DD-214, and for those that don't know, that's actually the show and discharge and it shows a, it tells a lot in a DD-214. It does. It tells if they fought overseas, which matters. It also shows how long they've been there, but the most important thing, that they're honorably discharged. Mm-hmm. And that's all you need. It's, I say that like this simple, but to give once you give that to your uh, funeral organizi- or, or, organization or, or mortuary or wh- whoever you use, they can use that and make that happen from the closest military base around. We'll usually send a group that's designed for a military funeral and give the proper rights that that person wanted. Sure. But there's a short window from when someone passes to when the funeral happens, and you don't have 10 days to go dig for the DD-214. And most military people have moved around a lot. And do you know the whole actual, I forget what year, so you have to research this on your own, but... A lot of the DD-214s, we're talking about millions, were burned I in heard a fire. about the fire. Yes, yes, I did so, hear about that. So if you don't have that physical copy, a lot of folks can't pick up the telephone because it, it's not that they didn't serve, it just can't be found. Yeah, and so what I tell people when I'm going through this, to ask, you know, be proactive. Yes. If you can't find it, maybe it burned up in the fire, yes. or I just don't remember, Right. then go get another one. Yes. You, you can get a replacement, and it's much easier when the vet themselves does it while they're alive. Absolutely. Because if not, then, okay, now the person left behind is now trying to figure this out, and, oh, my, right. they don't even – it's so complicated. You know, they're worrying about other stuff. Exactly. And But the veteran uh, themselves can walk into the Veteran Affairs Office, and it's them standing there wanting their form. Things move much quicker. Oh, absolutely. And they know the right language and the right you the, know, way the, to say everything. it. I, exactly. I was in this battalion, this, this. I mean, they can verify themselves quickly. Exactly. And where we can't because we're emotionally distraught. So we barely even know our own name when something like that yeah, happens. Yeah, luckily I, I did find my dad's. That, you yeah. know, he was a Korean War Army vet, but um, which was, like you said, kind of yeah. cool when I read it. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, oh, I didn't know he was. Right. Because you, know, you, know, you have stuff they never talked about. Right, you exactly. know, When I read my dad's, I was like, now I realize why he never talked about it. Like the tours, and, and he spent more time overseas as a soldier than he did on, on our land. Okay. I mean, it was wild. It was it was something to read. But, you know, and also I thought it was a good thing to pass down because, you know, now people can really know because if someone doesn't tell you about it, and military doesn't send you a letter of exactly how awesome or brave your loved one sure, was. Sure, sure. That document shows it all. There, it doesn't leave, and it's so one page tells the whole story. It's, it's wild. To Typed, me. written too. Typed, <laughs> written. I love it. I mean, but it, but it, but it just means something. But, but so no, that so so that's the biggest thing. You know, um, that can really save so many headaches for communities, for family, for secondary, you know, mortuaries, for anyone that is needing to help that person that can't help themselves at the time. You got the information. Um, Especially the financial, uh, we'll have to go into that again on another show. Sure. But that financial portion with passcodes, have them written down. But the, here's the interesting thing: you also got to change them often because of the scammers. So you know you might have to put an addendum there because you know you already start filling this out. Well, have a page, have a scratch pad, mark yeah. through. Yeah, and write you can always add to this. And what I recommend people is have the username, password, and a date. Yes. Because and people say, well, why the date? I said, because you'll remember the last time you changed it right. or the first time you created it. Mm-hmm. And if you have an AOL email and it's, you know, from 1982, right. um, you probably need to do a lot of things, like get a new email and a new password. But that's right. a, a, a whole other topic. But 
So, so absolutely. So then it's easier to manage. You know, yes. I literally have had people, you know, dump out a manila envelope with pieces of napkin and scrap paper and envelopes uh, and I say it's it. here. Well, 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 where do I start? Yeah. And literally, it's it's a process of elimination. Right. And then okay, so if you three, but here's a four, so I'm gonna say three's gone. Oh, here's yeah. a five, oh, so I'm gonna yeah. say four. Yeah. Yeah. So then eventually, it's like, all right, well, we're just gonna create a new one. Well, I don't want a new one. Right. Well, then it's not gonna work. Right. You know. So what what are we gonna do here? So, um, it it it's interesting, but um, and I and you've told me this before, so I kind of want to share this for you. So I'm speaking uh, for you, <laughs> but. I, you know, if people can get their hands on this, and it's, and I say a couple, and they're both still living at home, and they're both um, functioning and somewhat healthy, and and doing their day to day, it's time to start that now. Absolutely, um, because it really can go a long way. Because then it becomes something that they're they've invested in, they put in, and as they change things, they like to update it. Because I don't think anybody intentionally goes impaired or leaves the earth wanting others to have to suffer for them trying to figure it out. It's but it's interesting. You said it earlier, and it was a phrase that my mother-in-law said. So when I introduced this to her, she was in her early 90s. And I said, Miss Mamie, do you have something like this? And she looked at me, and she said, it's none of your business. Hmm. I get so, it. It's amazing. And, and I'm the son-in-law, and I yeah, said, no, I, I, I get that. I said, but it's the business for you and your family that this would be very helpful for your daughters and your son. Mm -hmm. And she used the phrase you said earlier, they'll figure it out when I'm gone. See, And I said, you know, that's not a really good idea. Yeah. And it never really actually happens. Right. And, and so it's interesting because when she passed, everyone thought, without getting into a lot of personal information, yeah. they thought there was a lot of documents around that there weren't. Yeah. And there were old documents that she said she was going to change and never did. That's right. And there were some surprises that happened. Mm -hmm. Then family dynamics. Exactly. Out. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, you and I could probably sit here and tell stories like that all day long, but that one shocked me. And another one, his brother passed away about a year ago. So his wife and daughter were going through, and his, bro his brother was helping the family go through the estate. Well, the lady's house caught fire. Mm. Burned to the ground and killed her. Wow. Left two daughters. They're gone and married somewhere else. All the paperwork in the house, will, whatever, gone. Gone. So now they're, he's helping the daughters filter through all of this stuff, mm -hmm. and it's just a nightmare. A nightmare. You know, so th there wasn't even documentation that was kept, like, somewhere else. So right. the engineer in me, what I say is... Some of you may already be thinking, well, I have that digital vault with my password in it, and, right. you know, it's, it's whatever one you use, and, and they're great. But I said, if nobody else knows you have it and the password to get into it, mm -hmm. it's worthless. Yeah, it doesn't exist. So what's your redundant system? What's your backup system? Mm -hmm. And it should be paper. Yeah. Well, is it a pain in the butt to keep up with both? Probably. But if you're 80... You're not working. You're no. not. You don't have anything else to do. You got time, exactly. And it's not a lot of time. But but with this document, what I tell people is what you said. Like if they're doing it at the house, is don't try to sit and fill this out in one afternoon. No. No. You know, kind of open it up and look. And I mean, the first page is like name and social security number, right. and, you know, the easy stuff. Right. But all of a sudden, when you maybe get to the page that has DD-214 mm -hmm. or what's the insurance policy for the car or mm -hmm. whatever, and you stop because, well, I'm going to go look and then you get distracted, do something else. Mm -hmm. And then you go, oh, well, I'll put it on the shelf and I'll mm -hmm. come back. And you don't. Right. So um, do little chunks at a time. Yes. Um that's that's part of I mean, and if you're that person that you know it's none of your business, that's why I say do it while you can, because you can still privately write everything down. Then after you're gone, then they can see your business uh, if that's the way you want uh, it. Exactly, and and if not, you know, if you have that power of attorney, whoever that trusted mm -hmm. someone is, then sit with them and say, oh well, let's go look here, Dad. Maybe it's in this closet where you kept all your other stuff, or right. or Mom, you know, it's in the drawer or whatever. But. Right. Um, a lot of people say, well, why isn't this digital? Um, it's not digital, one, because it's really expensive for me to encrypt it. Yes. That's quite honestly the answer. Right. But secondly, even if it was on a thumb drive, people would store it on the computer and call it something that it's not 
and bury it three folders deep oh, in there, yeah. you know, and it would be grandma's Thanksgiving pie recipes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you would never think to look there no. until maybe Thanksgiving a year later after the person's already passed away. Right. So, um, and because they don't want anybody to find it. <laughs> and honestly, once, and once people get into to my world and they live a couple of years within long-term health care, a lot of this information won't, won't be as easy to fill out because things are forgotten. Things have been moved around, not easily accessible. Right. So it really has to be done at the beginning level, like the marketer, as, as they're filling out their information, it's a good time to go ahead and pull this out and start here with this as well, um, or before. I mean, those are really your best time frames to go. Um, one last question, because I know I've already had you here. Time flies sure. every time you're here with me, but... Uh, you know, we all know that your specialty is teaching technology to senior or aging adults, and honestly, anybody that will, that, exactly because yep. you, you you won't you won't discriminate. You will if I call you up, you're like sure. You know, let me tell. Oh, you. Oh, Andy, but it's you again. It's you again. <laughs> I, you remember the power button? <laughs> <laughs> but but in your opinion, uh, because you know you've taught everything from unboxing phones to computers on how to file and save and what a document is, and I mean, there's so much for us to talk about. But in your opinion, let's talk about passwords and safety because I know we talked about it on the phone and we all do online banking now. My mother loves online banking. And some require to change it every so often, but there's some banks that you have to do it on your own to change your password. In your professional opinion and what you've seen, how often would you recommend uh, someone changing that password and then writing it down that they've changed it? It's probably... Twice a year, twice a year, you know, maybe yeah. three times, depending on how often they're using it. I mean, it, that or unless I guess you've been manipulated. Yeah, yeah. if you've yeah. been compromised. I mean, I every now and then I'll get a call from you know somebody that's been in my class or a friend of a friend, and they'll go, "Hey, I got this email from my bank, and I'm not sure if it's real or not." I literally saw this last night, and I said, "If you don't think it's real, don't call the number on the email. No. Don't Google that." whatever bank it is, look on the back of your card, mm -hmm. your ATM card or credit card, or go down to the corner where you normally bank anyway mm -hmm. and print that email and show it to them. Yeah. You know, and it, in the one case, the lady, it, it was a, a real alert. Sure. But the bank was like, you did the right thing. Absolutely. And and they started shutting stuff off. So the, the password really is a protection. It's a validation for those that don't know, that it's you. It's not someone else trying to get right. at your account. I do a whole class on scams, and one of them is the usernames and passwords. Um, so the first, the biggest issue I see with seniors in their technology is one, scams, and two, is managing their usernames and passwords. Yes. Um, it's just, it's, they're vulnerable mm -hmm. and easy targets for people that can manipulate them like we talked earlier. Oh, absolutely. It, it, and it's becoming... Like we talked about, more rampant every day. People are making a living doing this. Uh, Bill, I appreciate you being here. I took up more of your time than I asked for. Uh, but really, everybody, uh, first things first, uh, get a hold of Bill. Just call Bill for your organization. Let him come in and talk to you about everything that we've just went over. Because this is real. It's real things that, that, that real people deal with every day that you've streamlined. You've really went in and tried to focus in on the safety factors of life and needed information because when the time comes where we're not able to speak for ourselves, um, you've provided ways that we still can. Absolutely. That, that's a big thing. And protection for our family and assets and everything that we worked so hard for. The cool thing, and I just want to make yeah, one last comment, absolutely. is so with this Life Stats book, I can actually white label, custom brand it hmm. to any company. Yes. So it becomes yours. It's your colors. It's your logo. Absolutely. The content inside – is the same. Right. You can change the pictures, you, but, but right. all of the messaging is in there as yours. So it becomes very personal mm -hmm. for you and your business, and you also even use it for your employees. What Absolutely. a great benefit for if you have a thousand employees or even a hundred employees that you help them do this for them. So that's one of the things I can offer. And but like you said, I, I'd love to sit down because I want to be an extension of your marketing. Right. I, I'm a marketing guy. Yes. And so part of what I want to do is sit with you and how do you differentiate and drive more business to your business? Absolutely. Well, because if you can, you know, if you're a business, regardless of what that is, but you know, specifically long-term care or something of that nature, and they see that that this community or this organization is offering everything possible to its clients 
to make things easier because that's what we said. We said that we were going to make quality of life easier. And this is still another part of it that we don't think about because it's not a physical thing you see that we're doing. But at the, at the end, it's probably the most valuable document that someone's going to have. Well, it's a legacy document. So you think about when that incident happens, oh, well, those nice people at wherever that yeah. community is, look what they did. They have this cool stuff for mom and dad, and it's all filled out, and we helped them, and life's going to be so much easier well, it really is. I mean, for the it lets people chapter. grieve. We, 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 I had a, had a gentleman here, and he's awesome, and, and he specializes in grief. And do you know, not, he didn't say this exactly, but the way he brought this, when this is all done that you don't have to think, you just follow when someone's going through grief, um, it makes their grief, because you know you got stages of mm-hmm. grief, they go through grief easier than if they have to start finding this and reminiscing and looking and then disappointment comes and then happiness comes because you may, like you said, thought all the documents and papers were there and they weren't. All these things, that causes stress and things. Absolutely. So the grief tends to, you, you, you'll be stuck in an area and you can't get past that because you can't get, you're trying to actually do business. So you can't move forward with grief because you're still, it's still lingering right there by you every day till you figure out whatever it is that you're trying, which right. that, that could help. Absolutely. I mean, certainly that's not going to take away grief, but yet at the same time, uh, it gives the respect that in wishes exactly as you and I want. Absolutely. Um, so, Bill, of course, you know you'll be a guest again because, you know, uh, our world is constantly changing with technology and you're on it for us. Uh, appreciate your newsletters that you send. Um, if, like I said at the beginning, if you haven't signed up for it, that is some of the best information that you'll read that'll make you go, I didn't know that. <laughs> I did. I was like, I didn't know that because I literally said, and I'll read the whole thing because it's just good information. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's called Tech Tuesday. In case Tech, anybody t- yes, else. Tech Tuesdays. It comes out every Tuesday. Uh, not every Tuesday, but once or twice a month. So. Yeah, I get it. When it pops up, I'll, I say every Tuesday because sometimes I'll go back and read like way behind. But at least I caught this one fairly new when it came out because I was like, this. I just did not know why. Sure. I've heard do this and I'll follow the rules, but you gave an explanation of why. And so it's easier for me to turn it off now than thinking they're just trying to make me turn off because they want me to pay for their movie or whatever right, you know, right, right. it may be. Uh, but uh, as always, we appreciate you being here. Always a great guest and with new information. So I can't wait to see you next time, what you come up with and what the world has brought us. Uh, but guys, until then, thank you for watching uh, and listening as you do and supporting us through all this time. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>